Welcome to Audio Stories of the Paranormal. I'm J.B. Simeon. Thank you for listening. I read an article a few days ago about a writer who was hired by a publishing house to research true regional paranormal experiences for a book they wanted to publish. He put an ad on the internet to solicit stories. He received a lot of stories, but not enough to fill a book. So he made up the remaining stories that he needed. After the book came out, he noticed something odd. In all the locations that he had created paranormal stories, such as bars and hotels, they began to actually report paranormal activity consistent with what he had written. They were convinced that the stories that they read in the book about themselves had actually occurred. Some even offer proof. Now think about this. What if those locations are actually now haunted? Is it possible, then, that we can attribute to a critical mass of people believing that something is true actually makes it true? Is it possible the power of their beliefs was enough to create the strength of will to bring ghosts into existence. Through the five community members' stories, we explore that theme. I hope you will enjoy them. Now I ask that if you enjoy audio stories of the paranormal, that you tell your family, friends, and associates about the show. If necessary, please help them download or stream the show to their smartphone or whatever connected device you all may use. You can always find this show at www.theaudiostories.com. When you get to the website, all you have to do is select the story you want to hear and press play. Okay, after this quick break, our stories will begin. Welcome back to Audio Stories of the Paranormal. In this segment, we explore five stories of the paranormal submitted by our community members. The question is, does human will create the paranormal? Okay, let's learn something. This experience is from member Jimmy Reed. It's called Hallucinations. I was riding a three-wheeler ATV with my girlfriend in the field besides her house. We were going so fast when we encountered an unexpected dip in the ground. We went flying over the handlebars and I landed with a thud on a rotting tree stump. I was wearing a helmet, but my head hit so hard it cracked the helmet and the impact knocked me unconscious. I woke up with blurred vision and a throbbing headache. As I recall it, I was lying on my back in the field in pain, staring up at my girlfriend, Jill. She was crying and screaming something that I couldn't understand. Everything was moving in slow motion and in a blood-tinted hue. I know that I was looking at my dad standing behind Jill. He was looking over her shoulder at me, and there was a look of deep concern on his face. It occurred to me that he shouldn't be there at all. He was dead. He was still wearing the clothes we'd buried him in. His mouth was moving, and he was saying something that I couldn't hear. I knew then and there I was badly hurt and hallucinating. I remember softly saying, Daddy, where'd you come from? Then I passed out. The next day in the hospital, Jill came for a visit. My mother made an excuse to leave the room and leave us some time alone. Thank goodness Jill had only had minor scrapes and cuts. She took off her shoes and curled up on the hospital bed next to me. She laid her head on my chest and listened to my heartbeat. Then she lifted her head and I noticed that her eyes were moist from tears. 
When our eyes met, Jill asked, Jimmy, did you know that your dad was out there too? This experience is from community member Walt Schmidt. It's called On Jones Road. I live in a rural area in British Columbia. There are lots of woods. The main thing we have to worry about when driving on the roads around here is hitting a deer. I was speeding down Jones Road with my high beams on headed to Walmart. I was trying to get there before it closed. In my headlights, I could see something big, like a big bear on the right side of the road getting ready to cross. I jammed on my brakes, but I was moving too fast to completely stop. I slid into it. I know that I hit it because I felt and hurt the impact. A little further up the road, I was able to stop the car. I didn't want to get out, though, because if it was indeed a bear that I had hit, it wouldn't be safe. So I turned the car around and drove a few yards back down to where I hit the bear. At that time, I only had one headlight still working. I didn't see the bear. I guess it crawled into the woods. The next morning, I returned to the location on Jones Road where I had the accident. It was easy to find because the broken parts of my car had been, that had been torn off were still laying on the road. I got out of the car to pick up the broken parts. It was then that I noticed the enormous footprint in the mud alongside the road. Judging from the size of the footprint, I didn't hit a bear. I hit a Bigfoot. I made some plaster cats of the footprints. I have them in my den today. Just about everybody thinks they're fake. They also think that I hit a bear. This experience is from community member Larry Peters. It's called The Gong. The first time that I recall something possibly supernatural happening was when the couple next door invited me over to watch the last game of the Final Four basketball tournament on their enormous TV screen. We had moved into the complex on the same day and we were determined to be friends. They had a small Chinese-style dinner gong displayed on a table at their entry hall. While we were watching the game, we suddenly heard that gong loudly ring several times. It ring with force. It sounded like it had been struck by someone using a hammer. We were all startled. The dinner gongs just don't ring themselves. We looked it over, but we couldn't find the reason it rang. About a week after that, the couple moved out. They told me strange things were happening in that apartment. The gong kept ringing at all times of the night. Now, it was made stranger by the fact that they had placed the gong in their storage unit. It wasn't in the house any longer. They decided that it was best to leave. They lost a deposit of at least two weeks' rent when they moved out. I, I could never afford to do that. On the night of the day that my neighbors moved out, I also heard that Chinese dinner gong ringing. This time, it was inside my apartment. Over two months, the ringing kept me up at night. I was sleep deprived and angry when I broke my lease. I lost my deposit on the apartment. Luckily, my sister Sue and her husband Tom let me stay with them at their house until I could save for another place. The first night there, we all heard the gong ring several times, on and off through the night. It has rung every night since then. This experience is from community member Abby Franken. It's called the Smartwatch. I bought a smartwatch for my daughter. I just felt that no matter what else happened, that this watch would keep her safe. The watch has a panic button. When it's depressed, it sends an alert to my phone. From my phone, I can see my daughter's location 
and I can activate a microphone that allows me to hear the background noise wherever she is before I speak to her. I could also tell if her heart is still beating. Last Thursday, I got a notice on my phone that the distress alarm on her watch had been activated. Thinking the worst, I activated the location finder and confirmed she was at school. When the microphone activated, I could hear children screaming in the background. I started calling my daughter's name, Sheila, Sheila, but she didn't answer. I was scared out of my mind, but I called the police and I got to her school. By the time I arrived, my daughter was waiting with her schoolmates and they were under police protection. She came up to me and we hugged and kissed. Then she told me the strangest thing I've ever heard. The shooter was one of her classmates. The kid brought the gun to school just to impress some friends. He dropped the revolver, a 22 caliber pistol. It was loaded and it fired when it hit the floor. The bullet, only one bullet, hit my daughter's watch and activated the panic alert, then lodged in the wall. She suffered a fracture of her left wrist. Other than that, she was fine. The watch deflected the bullet. However, it was damaged. The police still have it. I'm not sure that this is paranormal inspired, but I believe incredible luck is itself a paranormal event. This final experience is from community member Tassa Lee. It's called We All Believe Now. Shirley and her two children, a boy of eight years old and a girl of five years old, were homeless after Shirley's mother died. They had depended upon her social security check to help them pay the rent and eat. Since they no longer had to check, they lost their apartment. Now, all they had was an old car to live in. They would park the car in the Walmart parking lot so that they could use the toilets and eat. When Walmart closed, they would move on to a 7-Eleven store and they would stay there until the morning. That's how they were living before this incident occurred. Through a pastor at a shelter that they stayed in, they were given an opportunity to live in a house for free. The house needed some major work, but it was habitable. They were allowed to stay there while the owner made repairs. The owner just wanted someone on site to discourage theft and vandalism. There was one other thing. The house was believed to be haunted. Shirley was desperate and didn't believe in ghosts. Within hours of learning about the house, the family moved in. The place was a mess, but it was livable. After cleaning the living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom, they unloaded their car and moved everything into the living room downstairs. It was very late, and the remainder of the house would have to be cleaned before they could spread out. They lay their quilts, blankets, and pillows on the living room floor and tried to sleep. In the stillness of the night, they heard children's voices and running footsteps coming from upstairs. Shirley told the kids to stay downstairs while she went upstairs to investigate. With her flashlight in hand, she began to ascend the stairs. She called out for whoever was upstairs to come down. Then she heard the children upstairs laughing. As she went further up the stairs, the louder the laughter became. With a booming, commanding voice, she demanded that they come down the stairs now and stop this foolishness. Then the children stopped laughing, and the house was silent again. That's when the whispering began. She couldn't make out what they were saying. Upon hearing the whispering, her children begged for her to return to them. They were scared. 
They all felt the house was getting colder also. That's when they heard the classic, Get out! Thunder and echo throughout the house. The kids were already at the door with the blankets when Shirley came running off the stairway. They all piled into their old car. They spent the remainder of the night at a local 7-Eleven store. Shirley called the owner of the house as soon as she could the next day to tell her what happened the previous night. The owner didn't seem surprised. She arranged for Shirley and the kids to stay at another of her houses. She personally retrieved the items they left behind and delivered it to them. The family is much more stable now. Sometimes Shirley drives by that old house out of curiosity. The house was torn down to make room for a new house. However, no one stays in the new house for long. It seems to always be empty and available. Okay, you paranormals, that ends our stories. Thank you to all the community members who shared your experience in this episode, and thank you to everyone who joined us on this exploration of the paranormal. So what do you think? Is it human will or chance that creates paranormal events? If you have a comment on any of the experiences that we've shared today, or you would like to share your own experience, please email me at feedback at theaudiostories.com. Or you can go to www.theaudiostories.com and post your reply in the contact form on the homepage. Also, you can just send me an email at the feedback at theaudiostories.com address and just let us know that you're listening. Before we end this episode, I'm inviting all listeners to visit the audiostories.com merchandise store. There's a link to the store on the homepage at our website at www.theaudiostories.com and in the show notes on this episode. At the merchandise store, you can find high-quality audio stories merchandise, Your purchases will not only provide you with really cool stuff, but it will also provide us with the means to keep producing the audio stories of the paranormal show each week. So please visit. You are our main source of support. That concludes this episode of the audio stories of the paranormal. Thank you again to everyone who shared your experience with the community. Thank you all again for joining us also. I hope you have enjoyed this experience and you will join us again for the next episode. Until then, please remember to be aware, be cautious, and take care.